Yes, guys, welcome back to another video. It's the end of the international break, thank the Lord. Well, we still got a couple days left, but tomorrow we're going to be back talking about the Premier League. We've got the Newcastle versus Chelsea preview. Steve's going to be hopping on for that as well. So stay tuned for that tomorrow as we finally transition away from this boring and scaremongering international break. Chelsea going down one day, Man City getting relegated the next, Tottenham potentially in trouble next, but not really going to happen. It's been a whole international break of just scaremongering BS. Thankfully, we will finally have some football to talk about in a few days' time. So at least there's that. But big up to everybody just locked in. It's another news update video for today. There wasn't really a lot to stream about. But there are still topics to discuss. Um, there's the Trevor Chalaber situation. We've got more news on him. And more clubs have called their interest in him due to his injury concerns. We've got more updates on the potential stadium plans. Basically, we're not going to be staying at Craven Cottage. Thank the Lord. But we're going to delve into everything there as well. There's a couple of other topics too. Um, Chelsea hope to finally offload Lukaku next summer, with Roma keen to make his loan move permanent, and despite his form, Chelsea remain keen to sell Lukaku. Shock. That shouldn't even really be a headline. Like, regardless of what Lukaku does, he don't want to stay here, we don't want to keep him, it is what it is. But at least he's doing well. I, I say I'm happy for him very loosely, I'm more happy for us, because he's raising his chance for value. Seems like Roma want to keep him. If they don't, I'm sure there's going to be other clubs interested in him as well. I've been saying as well, and if Roma can't afford him and we're looking for Oshimen in the summer, I'm throwing him straight to Napoli. I'm not even telling him take a flight back to England. Just take a flight to Naples and just stay there. Because you ain't coming back, brother. You are not coming back. But the best assist he could ever do for Chelsea is go to Napoli and help with the Oshimen transfer. You do that... Might not even care too much about the last few years. It might all have been worth it if Oshiman comes through the door. Although, to be fair, like after speaking to Rance on the on the stream with him a few days ago, I am low-key leaning a bit more towards Tony. Just because he is a bit more well-rounded. But if we were to get Oshiman, I'm not gonna complain. I'm not gonna complain. He is still a quality bagsman. Like, you can't complain for that, especially with the chances that we do create now. We've been needing a clinical finisher. He will still do a job for us. Either or, like I saw Jimmy say on his stream um, a few weeks ago, um, Oshimen or Tony, yes. That's the answer. I ain't picky. I ain't picky. But let's get into this Chalaber news. So Chalaber suffered another setback. Expected to be out until early January, but it's also reported that he won't be match fit until the end of January. With that in mind, Bayern have pulled out. Dortmund have pulled out. Tottenham have pulled out. Inter haven't really said anything, in all honesty, but they were interested in him in the summer. And yeah, a lot of clubs have called their interest, so basically, he ain't going anywhere this season. And, like, f thank God he ain't going Tottenham, first and foremost, even though they are desperate for centre-backs, they could do a lot worse than Trevor Chalabar. I think he's a quality centre-back, and he's good depth for us as well. But obviously, one game a week means we don't really need depth like that. But yeah, thank God he ain't going Tottenham. But for this, this is a lose-lose for everybody. For Chalaba, he's basically got a year out on the sidelines because he's not going to get any game time here when he's fit. He's not going to get to leave either because of this injury is just aggravated. It was only meant to be about four, six weeks that he was out for. And now he's out till January. This means he can't get a move. This means the season is basically over. Which is a real shame for him. Might still get development minutes here and there, but he can be doing a lot better than that. For Chelsea, the owners are going to be fuming because from their standpoint, they could have sold him in the summer for 50 million. Now, with a year out on the sidelines, the guy's transfer value has decreased. Regardless of the English tax or any of that, like he hasn't played for a year. He's our fifth choice centre back. His stocks have gone down. So we're going to have to lower our valuation as a result of that. Unless it's an English club. I guess maybe we'll ask for 50 million if it's an English club. But even then, you'll be lucky. You'll be lucky to get that much for him. I don't know. Maybe with us in Europe, he might get a route back into the team. Because now there's more fixtures to rotate around. Maybe he will see minutes here and there. But I don't know. 
I don't think he'll show willingness to be a squad player after this much time out on the sidelines. I still think Chelsea will try to offload him for straight profit on the FFP books. And if a UCL team retains their interest in him, I think he would want to leave. Like, he didn't want to go Forest because it wasn't a UCL team, but he's got interest from Bayern, he's got interest from Inter, he's got interest from Dortmund, even Tottenham. They've got interest as well. So I, I could see him wanting to leave for more game time and for his own benefit. And if that's the case, fair play to him. Fair play to him. Always been a dependable squad player for us. Always gives his best. Usually plays a lot better than what people expect of him. Best of luck. And it's just a shame he's suffering this injury. Fabrizio also said Chalaber is no longer the priority and is cold for Bayern Munich. There are many clubs in different countries interested in him including the Premier League, so let's see what happens. So he'll probably leave in the summer. I think if it's abroad, it'll be a cut price fee, like 30 35 I think if it's in England, you might see around the 40 45 but I don't think we get £50 million for him anymore. But yeah, that's the end of all the Chalaba stuff. Let's talk about the new stadium plans. And the Athletic have reported that Chelsea will examine all the viable temporary stadium options in the event of a Stamford Bridge rebuild. But Bowley and Clear Lake do not consider near, nearby Craven Cottage to be one of them. Fulham's home is regarded as simply too small and relatively lacking in corporate amenities to fulfil the brief. Fair enough. And you know what? Logistically, it was a nightmare anyway. Like, Fulham is close to Chelsea. It's the closest option that we have, but... It's lower, it's lower allocation than Stamford Bridge. And what people aren't realising is that that makes it a logistical nightmare when you're trying to sort out season ticket holder seats and then you're trying to sort out members' seats and then you have to sort out hospitality seats as well. You're already at a disadvantage. I think Fulham's allocation... I think Fulham's stadium allocation is the same as our, our season ticket holder numbers. Let me just check. So... Craven, yeah, what's the capacity? 25.7, yeah, that's very close to the amount of season ticket holders that we have at Chelsea. So you've already got a problem there. If if you're giving it all to season ticket holders, then what do members have? What do hospitality have? Because this is 25.7k including hospitality. It was never going to work out. You have to be going somewhere that's above or the same allocation as Stamford Bridge. And it'll likely be Wembley... I've heard rumours of a mix between Wembley for big games and another ground like the London Stadium for smaller games. But God forbid, God forbid, it absolutely stinks. Even going to that ground once a season to go watch West Ham v Chelsea is, is more than enough. More than enough. That place is a dump. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I think it's going to end up just being Wembley full time. But I don't know how you can get the community on side for that one. Because I think when Tottenham moved, they had to go to a vote. But, and Tottenham did a lot of stuff for the community in Brent, so maybe we could do that. But even then, them getting a second season at Wembley nearly didn't happen. Because they were only meant to be there for one year. So for us trying to go there for four years while we rebuild Stamford Bridge, I, I don't know how we're going to pull that one off. But, hey, we're going to see. We're going to see. That's a problem for a few years' time. Um, Todd Bowley and Clear Lake want the same, have the same mind as Abramovich where they want a 60k seater stadium, but they don't want to emulate his Westminster Ab Abbey style cathedral of football. I think they're talking about the old stadium plans for the new design of the bridge, but I didn't like that either. There was five times as many hospitality seats as there was normal seats and it would have killed the atmosphere. We need a stadium with some stands without hospitality, like the old bridge. Where we have Matthew Harding and we have the shed. No hospitality seats there. It's just normal fans who are going to chant. We need that for at least for Matthew Harding or the shed. Don't do this wraparound hospitality BS. Because that shit kills the atmosphere. But yeah, that's all the thoughts for today. Big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe, all of that. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, up the chels. We're back tomorrow for the Newcastle preview. Big up.